in middle school and I had a friend who um, like over the summer, just like one day, like she like had a music video mm -hmm. and like all my friends were in it and they filmed it at the school. And I was mm -hmm. like, that's mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> like, how did you do that? <laughs> and um, yeah, she just, I like asked her about it one day and she just mentioned that she'd worked with this company and um, that, yeah, like it was like kind of like a little thing she got to do. Okay. So the company that produced your video, mm -hmm. I remember because they've made a lot of other shit that I've talked about. I have a sure. very intimate um, <laughs> knowledge of, of Arc Factory Music <laughs> and Patrice Wilson. Hi, Mom. Okay, look at that. I can't talk right now. I'm about to do a video. Well, I don't care if Grandma just fell down the stairs. That's not the first time it's happened. Yeah, okay, I understand, but I mean, what, she's falling down, I mean, that bitch is clumsy. She falls every week for Pete's sake. Yeah, okay, well, just take care of it, Mom. You know, I mean, if you keep bugging me like this, you know, you're going to be a grandma someday, and you better stay away from the, the stairs yourself. Think about it. Keep it in perspective. Different perspectives. Love you, bye. Hey, guys, we're here to do a show video about Patrice Wilson. Now, you may not know the name, but I'm sure you know his videos. He's the guy who made Rebecca Black, produced, directed, and did everything for that video. In fact, he was in the video too, and I'll show you the excerpt just to set up this whole scenario. He's a master lyricist. He's a wordsmith, in fact. Many people will give him that title. I would. Talking about the master wordsmith here, are you ready for the title of this video? It's called A, B, C, D, E, F, and then there's a G at the end, too. So it's called A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And that's the title he's given it. It's not to be confused with his previous hit, A, B, C, D, E, F. And he's gone on board for next month, a really big hit coming out. It's going to be even top this one called A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And look out for that one next month, guys. It's going to be really a blockbuster. So let's see what Patrice has cooked up for us here with this A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mr. Wilson's neighborhood. All right, who's Miss? There, I guess that's Mr. Wilson, looking like a nice, the nice neighborhood pedophile there, Mr. Wilson, with the lip gloss and the, uh, mmm, beautiful face. That's like the uh, soft face, man. That's a face I'd like to wake up in the middle of the night looking over me, huh? Huh? What happened? Patrice is unhappy. Watch out. Some kids' lives are about to change forever. Patrice was like, that's, that's that look when a couple kids' lives is about to change forever, for the worse. He's like, hang on, dog. What the fuck's going on in this house? Let me peek in that window. Look at this image. I mean, this image is pretty twisted up in itself. Hey, remember that video we made two or three months ago about that black guy that was eating and raping kids, like a lot of kids? Yeah, Patrice Wilson. Yeah. That was funny. That guy's definitely a pedophile. Well, it was just one video. You don't know. What? Just one video? Ela, this is Patrice Wilson we're talking about. This is not something that someone just does once. If we went to his YouTube channel right now, I guarantee we click one random video and he's going to be on the ground rolling around touching and tickling with a little girl, dude. Are you seriously trying to tell me that you don't think Patrice Wilson is a pedophile? I guess. Come on, dude. All right, well, here, let me show you. Let's just click a video at random. Uh, which one? Here we go, Chinese food. Let's watch it and see. I think I know what he's saying. Hello, my name is Jeff. I was born in Florida. This script was written by a freelance translator. I have no idea what it says. I'm reading it phonetically. Hey, can you understand me? Am I saying anything? Look at me and my two sticks. I'm cooking food. Hey, I'm a chef. Hey, look at me. I'm an Asian chef. I've got two big sticks. Bitch, you don't go clubbing. You're eight. You will find a new friend. Oh boy. 
Knowing Patrice Wilson, this is going to be good. This is going to be weird. This is going to be creepy. This is going to be borderline inappropriate. And this is going to all make us reevaluate what we thought it meant to be alive, to be human, and to understand something that you're watching. You're going to find a new friend. All right, Patrice, let's see what you've got in store for us. What the fuck was in that food, dude? What'd you feed her, man? She's tripping balls. And now it's in Hebrew? What does it say, Yua? <coughs> Yanis, Yanis, Lavo. It doesn't make sense? Yanis, Yanis, to come. What does it mean? Nothing. Dude, you couldn't <laughs> even Google translate it to make it make sense. The Hebrew doesn't make sense, man. Wow, it's pretty weird, dude. This is pretty weird. I can't imagine that it will get much weirder than this, right? Wow, that's weird as hell, dude. Whoa, that close-up makes me really uncomfortable. I mean, everyone loves pandas. They're cute, they're cuddly, they're innocent creatures, but wow, I am really second-guessing that very natural assumption that everyone feels. I feel violated. All right. How can he make it weirder? How can Patrice make it weirder? He's on the ground cuddling and touching with a little girl. How can he make it weirder, guys? How can it be get weirder? I'm waiting for it. It's gonna get weirder. I know it's gonna get weirder. I'm waiting for it, dude. I love Chinese food. Oh, no! He did it. He took it to the next level, dude. He cranked it up to zero to 100,000, dude. Yeah, I did. He did it! I didn't know if he would be able to do it, guys. But he cranked it up all the way. We gotta go back, man. <laughs> I have a feeling we missed some good stuff. Okay, so in this fantasy world, she met a panda. Which would be fine, because it's a fantasy world, so you're like, okay, she met a panda and they're friends. She's friends with the panda. But ended up actually, actually being an older black gentleman who was real, a real guy in a panda suit, who was sitting, so imagine this, he's in there waiting for her, he gives her a cookie, it says, you're gonna meet a new friend, he set this up, he, how, how else could his cookie say, you're gonna meet a new friend too, too, so he gives her the cookie, he's sitting there, in his panda suit, he knows that she's tripping balls, because he spiked her food, obviously, so she's tripping out, she's this panda, she thinks she's hallucinating, she goes, hey, I just got this fortune, it says I was gonna meet a friend, and I saw you, Set the whole thing up. Honestly, Jeff Dunham's first comedy special was probably his best one. What? Just the way. What about the second one? The, the second one was really good, but. Just, oh, do you hear that? No. Patrice Wilson? Oh, what? Patrice Wilson back, he made a new video? I thought. I gotta go, Eli. Wait, this is the best what, reaction video. What about go. the walk? This is a new Patrice, a transformed Patrice. Better, stronger, more fit, less Chinese food, more Subway than ever. This shot is fucking bizarro world. What's the fantasy here? Does he wish he was a little baby? Does he wish he was inside the womb? He looks like a little baby. And he's even got poopy pants on too, so maybe that could place the analogy. This shot is fucked up, dude. If you look at it right, it looks like it's a baby. It's a baby stomach and they're wearing a diaper. Patrice, and you see, do, do you see it, Eel? Mm -hmm. It's Patrice, he wants the babies in the diaper. He wants them younger. That's what this whole thing's about, dude. Fucking Allison Gold and, and Rebecca Black, they were too old for him. He's gotta go younger, man. He's a fucking baby, right out of the womb. He needs them fresh as possible.
Welcome back, guys, to yet another episode of Ethan Yela. We're here with uh, one of the best memes of all time, Patrice Wilson. I mean, come on, we all know him, and we all love him, especially the kids. Very popular <laughs> with the kids, I've heard. What happened with this video, Shush Up, is that it was way, it was way too gone sexual, <laughs> featuring an eight-year-old, and like, and basically, like a couple of days after Patrice posted it, it was taken down. Yeah. I think there were like people were actually talking about it. People like, were upset. Articles and stuff. Yeah, people were yeah. like, it was going like mainstream media. So guys, buckle up because it only gets weirder from here. I give you Allison Goals. Shush up. Okay, this outfit she's in is like <laughs> fucked up. She's wearing this like sexy little outfit. She's supposed to show off her like midriff and it looks like a baby. It's, <laughs> she looks, she's got like yeah, baby it's, skin. It's a child's stomach. They have this little stomach. <laughs> it's fucked up, dude. <laughs> All the, all the positions, like when she gets arrested, like... Yeah, it's so... like, oh, <laughs> yeah! Okay, this, now this scene got, this scene rattled some, some cages here of a little girl mm -hmm. in an electric chair. Mm -hmm. I personally don't find it as problematic as the sexy shots. <laughs> like, it's just a, it's a cinematic. I'm really impressed with the production. The production is really good. It's just the taste. It's it's got... The taste <laughs> is not right. Something about the taste. He likes Subway too much. Okay, I've said that. He pr he's on that Fogel diet for sure. Gold is the new black. Oh, fuck. That was like a diss at Rebecca Black. Oh, Wasn't it? Gold is, is it? the new black. Because Rebecca Black was his flagship oh, lady. Gold is the new black. So shots fired here officially at Rebecca Black. She, this is an official proclamation of shush up, Rebecca <laughs> Black. I'm the new Rebecca Black. Gold. That's crazy. Shit, dude. This is like, this is like real street beef. <laughs> this is like what Biggie and Tubac were rapping about back in the 90s. <laughs> this is real street beef. <laughs> Okay, so they just killed, they slayed her. Is that okay? How do you feel about uh, her uh, eight-year-old being electrocuted and slain by a grown man in a music video? Why did you pull the punch on the shush? Like they've got the eight-year-old girl dressed like a prostitute. They've got sexy dancers. They're slaying children. But when it comes to saying <laughs> shut up, that's too rude. What did you just say, Ethan? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Sorry, Don't sorry, I meant shush. On video. I meant shush up, guys. Please forgive us. We said shush. Here's a picture of my dick. Here's a picture of my asshole. Here I am to, uh, murdering a baby child. Please forgive me for saying shut up. <laughs> well, something for everybody. Got some sexy lumberjacks doing some work in the yard. That's nice. They're thoughtful. Yeah. It's not just for men anymore, it's for <laughs> women as well. You crank it or sh. You crank it or sh. So turn into a gay porno now? <laughs> like, what's going on out there? Bunch of sexy ass topless lumberjacks yeah. doing some yard work. Yeah. And little Alice and Cole dancing. I don't know. Where is this going? This is going straight to the dark web. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, it's open for a sequel! Well, that never happened. That did not <laughs> ever happen. But they wanted to. They wanted oh a sequel. They, well, I mean, obviously you want to put that much time and effort if you didn't think it was the shit. That was his, like, that was his yeah. godfather. That was his magnus yeah. opus right there. That was the one they were going to remember him for. And frankly, he wasn't wrong. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. He wasn't wrong. So, guys... If you understood what happened here, maybe yeah, get, tell I want us your interpretation. In We're comments. gonna be reading the comments because I, I, if somebody actually has a like compelling interpretation, and I'd we, like to hear read it. We actually watched it like 
I've seen this and 20 times. A times. So. A lot of times when you weren't here and the lights were off. No, that's not true, guys. <laughs> Just a joke. Um, thank you for watching, guys. We love you. We appreciate you. Thanks for joining us here. I know that was a weird, wild journey. <laughs> I hope we didn't give anyone too much trouble, too many nightmares. You know, sometimes shit gets real. Also, people are ask, keep asking me if we've talked about Patrice. She is unable to discuss yeah. Patrice. Yeah. As it relates to Friday. Mm -hmm. Are you able to talk about Patrice as it relates to uh, <laughs> other things? I can't. You can't. Okay, fair I enough. I can't. Respect. Yeah. Sorry to everyone. Keep it smart. I no, really, no, no, don't, no. Yeah. Hey, listen, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Yeah. You feel we, like... can say, we can say this for legal reasons. You can't discuss it. Can you say that, or you won't even go I that can far? Say that. You, you can't can, say you that. You can say that. I can say that. <laughs> okay. So you know they confirm nor deny what I just said. I that is for legal. Okay. Conform, there it is. confirm, wow. nor deny. Yeah, there's some serious business happening. Okay. There's some serious business. Yeah, yeah, serious <laughs> yeah. business. Yeah, I wouldn't want to cross Patrice either. That dude scares the <laughs> shit out of me. He threatened me once. Really? Yes. Or he was, he was, he actually had me hiding. He, he had me leave my house. I was so scared. We literally wow. did. <laughs> we did. He wow. made, so, he did some live stream. Wow. He did like a time count, like counting backwards to something. <laughs> wow. And nobody knew what. He had why. H3 in the title. And there was H3 wow. in the title. And it was like a static live shot of a bathroom curtain that kept moving. And, and I was, was like, like, this is fucking it was terrifying. <laughs> very scary. That's scary. It was That's scary. scary. I would be scared too. Actually, we actually yeah. like drove away from the house, but whatever is happening at that count wow. ending, do not be there because we were like, wow, scared. We first <laughs> discovered it. I was actually doing a show with Post Malone, and then someone's like, yo, you got to pull up Patrice's channel. And we were watching it, and it was, we were so scared. And then, <laughs> yeah. I, wow. And also, he's fucking like <laughs> insanely, like superhuman jacked. And yeah, uh, he too. scares me. <laughs> that boy ain't right. People were asking me to pull this up just to go back for a minute. This is the oh clip. We were live on the oh. podcast. We were with Post oh, Malone. Wow. Oh, wow. And then somebody sent us this link. And they're wow. like, yo, Patrice is streaming and he has your name wow. in the title. <laughs> that, is a, that is Wait, a real that's curtain. a real curtain? I'm dying. I thought Dude, it was, I have to, you have we, to turn this no. off. <laughs> we thought. I thought that it was wait, like. Wait, wait, a, we I'm thought sorry, it was an I image, this, and then we realized there was so someone behind weird. it. Oh wow! It was so, so creepy, so dude. Weird. What? Oh my I'm god! Freaked out. <laughs> Very I'm large scared. countdown. <laughs> yeah. I know he had Aww. me at best. Look how skinny wow. I am! Holy <laughs> shit, dude! What the hell? Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> What if he comes out with like a kid's head? And then what? Like, yeah, what do you exactly. do then? <laughs> yeah. I'll find oh out later. God. I'll find out later. <laughs> we were looking at it. Yeah, I don't know. It was really weird. Wow. It was really creepy. Baby. Yeah. Wow. That was a while ago. Shit. That's crazy. You remember Patrice okay. Wilson? Oh, yeah. God. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm glad. Okay. Because I got a weird one. Okay. The weirdest one. <laughs> the weirdest one? This shit creeped me out. It's got to be <laughs> fucking pretty weird. I think you and everyone watching is going to be shocked. Okay. <laughs> I'm sitting. <laughs> yeah, don't stand. I need a cigarette. This shit okay, legitimately this freaked me out. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what to think of this. No, because... So the guy... In, I, need to, I need to light this up. I'm not overselling this, you guys. I swear to God. Okay. Yeah, let's go. I need to fucking have a sip of this beer here. I need to settle my nerves. <laughs> so Patrice Wilson... For those of you who don't know, he makes like... He made four, Friday. He made Friday. He made all these videos with this little blonde girl, Allison Gold. Mm -hmm. Very pedo, weird, creepy vibes in all of them. Um, we made a lot of videos making fun of him a long time ago. So recently, just a couple of days ago, he erased all the videos on his channel. And he all he has now is a live stream. A one li live stream? One live stream with a countdown. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up right now. <laughs> All right, so here is it. He erased all of his videos. He changed the logo of his channel to the shadowy, creepy icon. Okay. It's him in a hood. Oh. And H3, look at the title. H3. It's counting down till December 1st. That's 319 hours. <laughs> and look at this cryptic shit. It just says, it's like a bunch of gibberish, and then at the end it says dash H3H3. 
<laughs> what do you think? What I is don't this? know. That's <laughs> weird, man. The weirdest part is like this <laughs> shadowy icon. The hood. Man. He looks like player unknown. Like, how do I get a better look at that? Or like a and ring they wraith. They don't really let you. Yeah, he's a ring wraith, and I don't know what this is. He like blocked out the eyes. That's a video we've made. Oh yeah, right. Okay, yeah. What what video is that? That's from the uh, Alice and ABC, Gold ABC. ABC. Yeah. That's a great song. That's number one on my What's heart. What's the Chinese currently. food song? Chinese food. I like yeah, Chinese food. I like Chinese food. food. And, and some uh, wonton soup. That's when that's he like dressed like up <laughs> like a panda and was cuddling her <laughs> that's, that's and tickling like her. <laughs> so, like, what do... There's a hundred people watching this right now. It's a very entertaining stream. <laughs> um, but uh, should I be concerned about this? Why did it Whoa, just change? It changed. <gasps> He's what? watching you eat it. It just changed. What if it says something? What if it says something? Just wait until something else comes up. It was black until I'm freaked now. out. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody says maybe it was hacked, but I don't know. He seems like a pretty tech-savvy guy. Okay, and so... Oh. Somebody manually just changed that. <laughs> what was that? But how could he react that fast? How... Oh. Wait, it's just cycling between them. Is it, though? Yeah. Oh, oh God, it, I'm one. scared. What is that creepy fucking screen? Dude, I have chills right now. <laughs> That screen is so creepy. It's like a CD screen, like a screen with like guck in it. He was just moving behind it. No, it's not a screen. No! A screen. Oh, he's coming. No! Out. Oh, it's just on the other side. <laughs> no. Is that this... is a lot. That is Wait, a real that's curtain. that's a real curtain. I'm done. I thought Dude, was... I have to, you have to turn this <laughs> off. I thought that it was wait, like wait, wait, wait. I'm scared. Effects. Should I remove this? That's a real screen. That's actually a live screen. Are you sure? Yes. What? I'm freaked out. I'm legitimately <laughs> scared. <laughs> Should I close this? Probably. I don't want it. What if he comes out with like a kid's head? And then what? Like, yeah, what do exactly. you do then? I'm closing it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, oh find I'll find out later. I'll find out later. We were looking at it yesterday and it was just black with the countdown. He's watching. <laughs> Did he bait me? What? Because he put H3 in the title. Did he bait me into putting that? Like, he expected my reaction to, to show this on well, the podcast live. <laughs> well, if he was doing that, why would he just move behind the screen? Yeah, this is weird. <laughs> why wouldn't he come out and say, Ethan, I hate you. Why would he <laughs> play because these he's going to kill me. <laughs> he's going to kill us both on December 1st. Oh, me? Not you, me and oh, you. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. I need to get some fresh air. After I'm, I'm this. No, I'm this sure. is, I had chills yeah, whenever that shook. screen. <laughs> we were just. He's watching. Oh my god, that's he's even watching. more creepy. Patrice. I'm sorry, dude. I it was all in good fun. I wish you the best. I think you're a talented guy. I although I've made fun of you in the past, you know, I think you're a really talented filmmaker. And please don't murder me. And whatever you have behind that curtain, maybe it's better that you just keep that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel like I'm in on this. You're dead. He's coming after all of us now. He can come for me. He's going to put H3. This is a okay, challenge. If you you're Patrice. watching, confirm. Change the title to H3H3 Post Malone also. Oh my God. No, don't do that. Do that. <laughs> Patrice, I'll... I've never said a bad thing about you in my life. Okay, <laughs> then we're going to check back after the break and see if he updated that. It's like a live stream now of. Looks like a cell phone feed in a forest. <gasps> what? Yeah, you gotta see this. I don't know. Should I put it? On? I guess I have to. Yeah. If it's like a kid's head, we'll just edit it out and post. <laughs> oh my god! I'm like anxious. <laughs> All right. It just happened. Okay, I'm pulling. I'm pulling it up. <laughs> this shit's creepy, man. Patrice, Very. what are you doing? Why are you doing this? It's got an audience now. Oh Ew. no, it is. What? Oh man. It is a cell phone feed. <gasps> what are you Where doing, Patrice? It? Why is it sideways? Don't you know he's a phone, you idiot? This is like from a horror movie. It is. This Why is he going to a church? Is that a church? Who's buried in that house? Dude, what are you doing? That's a church. Oh my god, it's a fucking church. Is it? No, maybe. It looks like It's got it. a like steeple. Yeah. But it looks very residential at the same yeah. time. There's a ladder in the back. It's 
very choppy. I don't know that we should watch dirt. this. You look scared. What? Patrice, if you're listening, can you just... Can you correct that? What's going to be in the house? Dude, should we watch this or should we bounce? I don't watch it. <laughs> Where does he live? I have no fucking... I mean, last I, I knew he was in L.A. But this does not look like L.A. Oh, this is a house. Oh, no. I'm so terrified, dude. He's just gonna cut it off. So there's a ladder. He's walking up behind a house. It's It looks very rural. It looks very country. It's very... very stuttery. There's a lot of lag because I guess he has a poor oh, connection on mobile. Oh, it's not rural. Mobile. There's another house right next to it. It's But it's kind of... I mean, it's... doesn't look like L.A. It's a nice house. It's a nice house, yeah. for sure. Very wooded. Are we just gonna see a dick all of a sudden? He's gonna like put it in his pants or something. If is he gonna go in this house and murder someone? Oh man! At what point do we close this? I mean, seriously. No. What? He's going in. We close it. Austin, now. what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. You're Ghost Malone. <laughs> How much can you tolerate? I don't know. <laughs> this is um, this is real though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just... ghosts are like one thing, but this is what is this blue shit? There's a tarp. He walked around the back. He's in the backyard. There's a Why tarp. There he zoomed. Everywhere? He zoomed. He zoomed in on the garage. It's not your house. That's not my house. No. Trust God. me, I would be fucking I would be, gone. I would be dead. He's right zooming now. in slowly on some red object in the garage. I think we should close it. Why, Eli? Are you afraid of actually seeing something, or you just think this is a waste of time? I don't know. It's creepy. Why is there ladders everywhere on the house? There's literally ladders everywhere. He's climbing oh, but, up one of the ladders. But it looks like kind of... Wait, like, it looks like a home invasion thing. Because he has a ladder going up to the balcony. No, but you could have just walked up the stairs. <clears throat> right? But, yeah, I guess you're right. What? What the fuck, dude? Do I close this? I mean, yes. seriously. Oh, I saw a hand. I saw a hand. I saw Patrice's hand. It was a black hand. Yeah, I told hand. you he was going to cut it off, didn't I? It'll be back. He changed... God. Did he change the font? Okay, I'm not. I can't watch. I saw his more. hand. It's definitely him because we were saying maybe it's this a hacker, but I saw he has. There, it was his hand. It was a black man's hand. <laughs> what, you, what? You know Patrice's hand? There's only one black man. And it's Patrice Wilson. <laughs> it's Patrice Wilson. I mean, it looked like. Oh my god! All right, all right. I'm gonna close this. Dan, give me. Uh, let us know if there's any updates. Oh my god! He's got an audience, so. If you're gonna do some weird shit, Patrice. We don't wait for that countdown. All right, I'm closing it. You lost your chance. This is, I'm just speechless right now. I'm very I'm speechless. I'm actually spooked. Have you ever seen that? How do we move no. on past this? I think we just do Patrice watch. Let's Should just we lock just keep fuck for tonight? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's make him angry. Let's not. <laughs> let's let's provoke him. No. <laughs> Oh my god. You can. Hey, I just want to let you know, Patrice, if you're watching, if Ethan <laughs> says anything crazy, it is not on behalf of uh, these, both of us. All of these I'm statements not. are endorsed by Post by, Malone. By Ethan and Eli. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, me, and Eli, this, me and Eli are going to be safe. He's going to spare us. This is all. <laughs> Austin wrote the script for the show. This is all endorsed by him. No, I didn't. I just saw on Eli's screen, he's in a cemetery. Some I saw guy gravestones. Walking. It's definitely him. I saw a black hand. I don't know if it was a, a black and hand. bracelets. It was. was it? I, Wait, here it's back. It's a black. Okay, let me pull it up. I'm Fuck not sure. It's, an... it's a black man's hand. No. That's Patrice. He's got the bracelets on. He does have the bracelets <laughs> on. <laughs> Fuck. A, All right, let's get a, a, a page out of Chris's notebook. <laughs> He's like, man, I've been wearing braces before that kid was born. He's being emboldened by all these viewers. He's gonna fucking dig up a corpse and fuck it. All right, come on. We're watching. Don't let me down. I see you in the graveyard, you freak. You want to just sit here and wait for that to expire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're clock. probably the safest here. <laughs> oh, that's a cemetery. That is Patrice in a what cemetery and a countdown with my name in the title. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> just is that a goodbye? <laughs> it's not a full <laughs> goodbye yet. I'll spend the night with you. Well, I'm worried about December 1st. That's what I'm saying. On December 1st? Yeah, I'll spend the night with Let's you. Let's do a getaway. I don't want to be in L.A. Why? Because he's here. Fuck that. Well, just Let get, him come. Let's just hole up with some shotties. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> we'll make a whole video about fuck it. Yeah. What's the safest room in your house? 
There's not. It's very vulnerable, and it makes it's me very concerned. vulnerable, and you can attack from anywhere. Well, he already knows that if he's planning to kill me. <laughs> really good. Okay, oh. here he is. It's again. Oh no. It's a loop of him just strolling around a cemetery. He keeps getting new footage and splicing it into the right. live stream. So we've seen. So wait, is this footage new? How would he be running the live stream if he were out at these places? Yeah, I don't think it's new. Well, no, that's it's got to be older, right? Yeah. Because he has to be in a situation like them out there. Yeah. Where he can actually run it. You could send it. Patrice, can you please give me a fucking break? <laughs> it's definitely Patrice. He's it's a black man's hand with bracelets. I recognize that wrist and bracelets anywhere. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I've seen it in my nightmares so many times. <laughs> I don't know. Patrice, I'm this I'm is sorry. So weird. Dude. Never meant. This is the repeating? This is new. It's a continuation. Yeah, this is a continuation. It's not repeating. It's not repeating. Do we just lock in and watch this? I gotta pee. <laughs> I have to pee too. Kinda scared to go pee. This is a continuation. This is so weird. Oh my god. Done giving your creepy ass. Yeah, attention. we're done with you, Patrice. Get real. <laughs> Come at me. We got shaddies on deck. He's also got like a. Oh my god. Oh, it's from our subreddit. Good. The thing is, is that he looks like a nice enough guy. Yeah. Yeah, this is really weird. He does seem like a nice guy. That was the thing I that the bye bye got. He was like a sweet soul. Right. This is just really weird. But. I'm still. Why, not why, why is that your shot? <laughs> I was just getting a full body. He's got to think here. What do you think that is? Just being what buff. What do you mean? It's got like a swole, like a it's fucking. A vein That's what happens when you're buff. Yeah. yeah. Really? <laughs> what do you think of that, Ela? <laughs> that <laughs> face. <laughs> that like face. he looks so mischievous. But like <laughs> maybe looking at the face be... now, I could definitely see. I'm so helpless against him. <laughs> I'm leaving town on December first. Are you? You're not helpless. Kind of against that. No, you're not. Dude, are you kidding me? He's been pumping for some reason. Those abs will s break me in half. <laughs> and that hairline? Forget about it. That's a dope sideburn. <laughs> that hair? That that's sideburn? Cool. Yeah, that's That's cool. like the dagger he's going to run into my heart. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. I right, just I... hope he doesn't think I'm on your side, because I'm definitely not. <laughs> Patrice Wilson, who's someone we had made videos before in the past, he's a little creepy guy, and they all have a bit of a pedo vibe, so... This was years ago. I don't know if the guy is actually diddling kids. I mean, how could I know that? But it's the insinuation. Yeah. There's never been anything actual. <laughs> yeah, no. I, the guy, I, it's a joke. Right, it's a joke. Anyway, he's deleted all the videos on his channel, started a live stream with our channel name in the title, H3H3. And... um it was super creepy. We pulled up the live stream when Post Malone was here, and the countdown faded to a shower curtain, a live stream of a shower curtain, a really creepy yeah. seedy one. And it was like uh, shots of him walking through a graveyard. It kept getting weirder and weirder. After we finished the stream, there was like uh, him walking in the you know in a dark street and mm -hmm. like mumbling, "Stop it!" Stop to himself. It. Yeah. Kill. I mean. What? At first, I was like, oh, this is creepy. <laughs> but then it kept happening, and people were saying in the comments, like, you should probably start taking this seriously. Like, at what point do I inform the authorities or YouTube or someone that this guy has lost a couple of, of screws and he's coming after me? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't super scared, but later, I think it was the next day, <laughs> he had changed the countdown because it was originally counting down like 300 hours till December 1st at midnight. Mm -hmm. And so he uploaded a video on his channel and he changed the countdown to two hours and he uploaded this video and it scared the living Christ out of me. Well, wow, it's so low that you can't actually see the image on this monitor, but it's a, it's a graveyard. It's a looping image of a graveyard and in the description it says Ethan. <laughs> Like, before he yeah. hadn't called me out by name, the H3H3, H3, it could have been incidental, maybe. Part of, of whatever. His, uh... And he added a second countdown, so there were two countdowns. Yeah. 
one was for that day, which was Saturday, the day after the podcast. So I'm sitting at home trying to relax after a long, stressful week. And I've got Patrice's live stream open with my fucking name and a close-up reoccurring of a rainy tombstone. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm freaked. Okay? If you don't know what this guy looks like, let me show you who the fuck is after me. This is Patrice Wilson peeking in the window of a 12-year-old girl <laughs> pretending to be Mr. Rogers. Okay? This is who's after me, writing Ethan in the description, dudes. Okay? So there was a countdown, and it was for, like, sometime in the evening, maybe 8 or something like that. And we were at home. Yeah. And we kept watching it and just doing whatever we were doing, thinking, like, maybe it's creepy, maybe it's stupid. And then as we kept going down, it was, like, almost, like... An hour to the end of the countdown, we started to get freaked out. Well, it was when I saw my name in that. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? This is fucked up. This isn't <laughs> cool. So I'm like, Ela, get your shit. We're leaving. I'm leaving the house. I am not going to get turned into Chinese food by this creepy <laughs> guy. That's one of his videos. It's a reference. To it's, a re it's a reference. It's a... I like Chinese yeah, food. Yeah. Um, so I bounce. And I wrote an email to my contacts at Google and YouTube and I and I'm so embarrassed by that email because I was genuinely like this shit is getting too weird for me to handle and I think I titled it something like urgent a threat against my life <laughs> like that dramatic because I was like I have one minute to leave I started getting like spot tingles down my spine I was legitimately freaked out urgent threats against my life and they're like, what? Like, what the fuck? Like, Ethan's always been insane. I complain to these guys so much. They're like, this, this is too much for me. Every day there's an urgent email. <coughs> yeah, exactly. Channel it's, deleted. <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's... It's a combination of me being an alarmist and them actually, you know, having a <laughs> shitty platform. But probably... Anyway, they get this email from me. And I think I, think I still have it, but I'm like... Uh, this channel is making threats against my life and he's got my, my name in the title and he's doing creepy shit in this channel. It's, like, not very convincing unless you are in it. Yeah. I can only imagine how it was received as, like, wow, Ethan's really losing it. I'm, re I'm really deeply embarrassed because these are people I respect they sent this email to. I sent that off. I'm freaked out. I'm not thinking. And we get in the car. We drive to a fucking Ralph's parking lot. And we're sitting there waiting out the timer. Like an hour. I'm sitting in Ralph's parking lot. I'm like, there's, plenty, there's people around us, right? And then. I was expecting to, like, come out the back seat. Yeah, and then it came on, and he had, like, a creepy voice. I've got the video. Oh. So the countdown finally expires. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> um, <coughs> let's take some calls after this. Uh, oh, wow, we have a lot. Holy smokes. I'm trying to understand this. Okay, he's still screening. This could be our ghost story, even though there's no ghost, <laughs> <if the> ghost <laughs> involved. Patrice is the ultimate ghost. Uh, Dan, I thought we were only supposed to have eight callers, but there's, like, 30 here. Anyway, mm. <coughs> so the the countdown uh, expires. I'm sitting in my car in the Ralvis parking lot, f shitting bullets, looking over my shoulder, and this is what comes on Patrice's live stream. And the number one thing today, bullying. It's so sad. <laughs> you sit there. You sit there. You sit there and you encourage it. And meanwhile, I'm sitting in my car, like... You sit there. Nothing. But you judge. You bring people down. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there in my car, like, Ugh, oh, this is so stupid. Like, what is my life right now? <laughs> like, listening to Patrice Wilson talk about bullying with a pitch shift on his voice. <laughs> like, this guy got in my head. Patrice <laughs> Wilson, dude. All of this seems to make absolutely no sense at the surface. However, we need to take a step back, consider who Patrice Wilson is, and make an informed decision as to what this is actually aimed at. As we said before, Patrice's countdown ends on December 1st. This was pretty easy to determine due to the countdown, however this isn't the only place he's pushing this date. 
In his cyberbullying speech, he explicitly displays this front and center for all of us to see. With this, we can safely assume that he's going to present something to us when next Friday rolls around. I want to show you some of the snippets that interrupt his live stream. Two notable ones in particular are the shower curtain that we saw on the H3 podcast and the creepy house. Take a look real fast. No, it's not a screen. No! Oh, he's coming no! out. Oh, it's just on the other side. <laughs> no. Is that, is a, that is Wait, a real that's curtain. Wait, that's a real curtain? I'm done. I thought Did I have to, you have to turn this <laughs> off. The ladder in the back. It's very choppy. I don't know that we should have watched dirt. this. You look scared. What, Patrice, if you're listening, can you just... Can you correct that? What's going to be in the house? Now, remember these as we move forward. So we know Patrice is a producer and that he's gained the attention of H3H3 H3 and their fans. Livestream countdowns are honestly nothing new and they all either lead to something super strange or nothing at all. One thing that these all have in common, however, are the large followings that they gather since for some reason, people love countdowns. Our curiosity gets the best of us and even if we say we don't care, Chances are that there's a slim hint of curiosity lingering in the back of our minds. Doing some digging on Patrice led me to a studio that he's been working with. This studio is called Sonic Media Networks, and they're creating a show called Vantage Points. Check out a portion of the trailer real fast. Ah, now what do we have here? That curtain looks familiar, doesn't it? Oh, and the house. It's almost as if they're the exact same. Well, spoilers, they are. Oh, wait a minute. When does this show release? Yep, you guessed it. December 1st. So there we have it. It seems as if Patrice is doing nothing more than a clever marketing scheme for his new horror show that releases on December 1st. While we won't absolutely 100% know the true purpose behind this live stream until December, the evidence before us looks pretty damn promising. If the revelation turns out to be anything other than this show, then I will be thoroughly surprised. However, it honestly seems like there's nothing more to it. The guy obviously knows what he's doing, and is self-aware regarding his attention coming from H3H3. Nonetheless, it will be a fun ride to follow this for the next two weeks to see what else he does. I'm really curious to see what he pulls. Also, if you guys find anything in his future live streams that seems similar to the stuff in the trailer, do let me know. With this, the more connections we find, the more solid this theory will become. And with that, this honestly wraps up my explanation of the Patrice Wilson live stream.
final moment. The countdown is at zero. And I want to thank you guys and people who are dedicated and stayed. You guys are awesome. And I wish the best for you guys. What is the meaning of all this? What is the meaning of all this? Let's go ahead and start from the beginning. The first day you saw a timer go up is a day I came back to YouTube. I hadn't been on YouTube for a while. I came back to YouTube and I said, you know what, I'm gonna get rid of this channel. Maybe shut it down, delete all the videos. I started working on other stuff like vantage points, TV shows. But for some reason, coming back to this channel, I said, this channel, these videos, everything from the past has given me so much grief. So I decided to go ahead and put up a timer, a countdown going to the first. And I wanted to see how many people would actually watch that timer. I wasn't going to put up any footage or nothing. But when I saw 10 people, 15 people, 20 people, steady increasing in numbers. And then seeing with what the press, what people like H3 said about me for the, all the false accusations, it just burnt me and I'm like, oh, I can never keep living if I don't deal with this and share my experience with everyone because the press won't talk about it, people don't really care. So I have to do it myself. So I saw that as an opportunity to go ahead and relive with you guys everything that happened to me. H3H3, that name was in there because those were the videos that blatantly accused me of being things like a rapist, pedophile, um, I eat children. I, I really didn't understand that part, you know, and so his name had to be in there so he could watch and he could learn and know this is what happens sometimes to people. When you say certain things, it can ruin everything they do. I put his name in there so he could also follow. And then the code you see in there, that long code, 66 slash six. Number one, six is my favorite number. 66 <coughs> is when my dad had a heart attack and had a stroke and eventually died. He lived on, but he lived on a, a, a little longer, but he died because he had two strokes. And he actually died a year after Friday. So throughout that entire process, yeah, that was not good. What does everything mean? Let's start with the house. I wanted to take you guys back to the empty house, an empty house that I had lost. So I had to walk to an empty house so you guys could see I lost everything. Lost my house, my belonging, everything went in storage. Lost my cars, everything. Everything I worked hard for, I thought I worked hard for. My passion, my goal, my vision was to help people you know, charge way less, you know, as much as possible to work with artists and give them some kind of opportunity. I enjoyed what I did, but when everything got crazy and all the accusations, I said, I can't take this anymore. The long walks and the shower simply meant I started to create personalities to protect me. I started creating different personalities because I knew that I was done. I knew I couldn't escape it. Even in the movie business, people still said, hey, I read this about you. I'm not gonna work with you. It says you're a pedophile. It says this, you charge people your game it affected me so I started creating personalities to help me cope the graveyard 
What did I represent? The graveyard represented, I, 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 I get death threats every single time. People like, you know, we want you dead. You bloody child molester, you pedophile, you rapist. After a while, it's taken into my head and the whole suicidal thoughts there like kind of coming to my head. Maybe it would be better off if I wasn't here. But you know what? I said no. I said no. I can't. I can't. I can't let that happen. Because the thing about it is that if I'm not here, people would say that pedophile deserved to die. I had to find redemption. The showers. Anytime I was in the shower, I tried to purify myself, and I'll spend long times in the shower. And that's when I started listening to motivational tapes, motivational words, motivational words in the shower many times. And that would help me. I'm like, I'm cleansing myself, I'm cleansing myself. The carts, the shopping cart, that sound seemed like a zombie. And that represented pretty much the old me was becoming a zombie. And me right now was taking over. I started learning a lot. So I had to kill that person. That number, the number that you guys had to crack, simply said, forget what you think you know. The old me is gone, no more. Meaning that that guy is gone. I've worked very hard to get to where I am today. I may not go with all the Hollywood stuff, I don't believe in any of that. I believe in keeping it loyal and being who you truly are. And I want to share that experience with you. I may have lost a lot and lost everything. Yeah, I did. I maybe looked old me, looked upon as a joke sometimes. But you know what? I can't take back any of that. It defines who this new person is today. Yes, even though I deleted all those videos and you will not see it again. The new videos will come up. I just don't want to be remembered for all that anymore because that guy is gone. It's now the new stuff. Ethan didn't take down the videos yet. He will. And if you're watching this, Ethan, I understand what you do is a joke. You play, it's all games and fun, for revenue, for gain. But you gotta think about what you're doing. Put a disclosure somewhere saying, you know what? All this accusations, it's, <clears throat> it's, not, it's not real. I'm just a, a comedian, it's a show. And then things will be good. Because what you say affects people. Because people will listen to it and take it in their minds. And it's a dangerous game. We don't play with rapists, killing kids, all that stuff. I can't even say any of that. So this is all what it meant, guys. I want to thank you for staying. Some of you were hoping that this would be some tragic ending. Probably kill myself or go. Why does everything have to end negative? You guys helped me see the light. And things are changing for the positive. Thank God. Gone is the old me and this is the new me. In terms of anything like, because during this entire process, we learned a lot. I learned a lot. You guys also changed. It was about you. Because a lot of you who had a conception of this is how Patrice is, this is how that fat usher guy is and all that. You saw things with different perspective. And you guys said, you know what, wait a second, wait a second. Does this guy look like a pedophile? <laughs> no. So you guys changed and I'm forever grateful. And I'm gonna miss you guys in the chat room, I, I, I will. 
The bullying speech, the whole anti-bullying speech, pretty much I was frustrated about the chat and how negative it was. It wasn't meant to be a mass anti-bullying speech, but it ended up that way. But I'm going to miss you guys and you guys please email because we want to go ahead and potentially create a show for a live stream for you guys. We have so many ideas, but I want you guys to tell me what you want. Because we want you guys to keep coming back. Because this has been this has been amazing sharing this with you. And there are more videos coming on that channel, like tonight and tomorrow. Yes. It's not over. I didn't want to put the videos on today because this is not about selling songs, about promoting myself, about vantage points, and any of that. This is about redemption and this is about you guys. Nobody should have to go through what I went through. I made it alive. I thank God. I'm good. I'm strong. You guys, have a good night. Thank you. I love you guys. Bye. I made it alive. I thank God, I'm good, I'm strong. It's clear to me that Patrice was desperate. He was desperate for Ethan to take down his slanderous videos and to let his audience know in a matter of fact way and not a jovial way that what was alleged of Patrice was unfounded and untrue. So that he could again begin to rebuild for the third time the life it was that he had before he lost it all. In one of the streams, and I don't know which one, but this is something that I found, Patrice Wilson shares his entire life story. That really just makes you think that Ethan Klein, the Arc Music Factory, the Black Family lawsuit and everything that it is that he worked for was now gone and he was struggling to regain a handle on his mental health but Ethan did nothing to relieve him he just never spoke about him ever again but the damage was already done as of the internet even now in 2022 Patrice Wilson is still an alleged and all of the other things it is that Ethan Klein put into the stratosphere that had no pre-existence before Ethan made them with his words. Where is Patrice now? Well, it's not good. In November 2019, Patrice Wilson made a series called Silenced, which contained multiple episodes that centered around discussions of teen suicide and social media bullying, basically riding off the wave of the 13 reasons why phenomena. Unfortunately, he has privated them all, but it contained hallmarks of Patrice's most recent work, which includes a lot of symbolism and very dark themes. <laughs> He has since renamed his channel to the Jesus Transparency Network, where he does a podcast with four episodes, and some of their titles are Voices Within, Power and Prayer, A and B, and Spiritual Warfare, which were uploaded approximately six to seven, or possibly now since releasing this eight months ago. If you choose to watch these videos in full, I will definitely link them in the resources section down below, but just be aware that some of these videos can come across as quite disturbing, if not fully prepared. But for those of you who don't have time to watch all of these podcasts, here are a couple of snippets so that you guys can see the obvious decline in Patrice's mental health. But even Jesus himself said, yeah, it's not going to be easy. Because you serve me, you will encounter obstacles. You'll be hated, 
You'll be scorned, disgraced, abused. Nearly give up, depressed, yeah? You would pray and probably doubt your prayers and think no one's listening sometimes. Giving your life to Christ is the most beautiful thing. But we encounter this. Father Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray you forgive me. Oh, shut, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Who are you? Who am I? I'm a you. Boom. <laughs> Can't beat your tongue now, eh? You're quiet. I'm not quiet. I'm just wondering what you're doing here. What I'm doing here? I've always been here. I'm a you. Get it into your thick skull that no one is listening to, to you. So keep crying. Get on your knees. Cry more and more. Sing the popular songs, Oceans. What a beautiful name it is. And the most recent song, come on now. Waymaker, Miracle Worker. Come on, there's no miracle happening for you. You're a sinner. It's not real. You're fake. Emotions overwhelm you and you think it's the power of God in you. But you're nothing but a sinner. You're nothing but a sinner. When I look at you, all I see is your past full of shame, no integrity. You've lost that good name, and now you think you're forgiven? You think Jesus loves you? This is something Christians tell themselves just to make themselves feel better. But you will be the same person that you were yesterday. That person that people laughed at, that person that people mocked. Relationship? Too late. Nobody's gonna love you and don't forget what she did to you. Oh, maybe a person that has issues like you. <laughs> but you're never gonna find anyone to fulfill you because you are a loser. And all you do is ask God to forgive you for this, forgive you for that. Your entire prayer is asking God to forgive you. That throws away any personal relationship you could have with Him. And you know, if you don't have a personal relationship with Him, the Bible says that uh, you are a heathen, a hypocrite, a hypocrite. You wanna go preach the gospel? What gospel? God does not know you? God does not love you? You might as well just do me a favor. Do us a favor. Take this put it in and pull the trigger. But my interpretation of these podcast videos isn't the same as everybody else. My interpretation of this is a man who is continuing to create art whilst battling with his inner demons. Everybody has them, maybe this is just his way of dealing with them. In my mind, he seems as if he started to believe that he is all of the things it is that people are saying he is online and on social media. And that he is still suffering from the words that Ethan Klein said eight years ago on the 2nd of October, 2014. That be you guys remember Patrice Wilson? Oh, There's been like a that. whole new angle. It's so... Which is kind of crazy. It is, that's why I didn't, yeah. It's, it's cool, I'll get into it. Patrice Wilson was like old, 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 old school h3 h3 productions this guy he made um friday he made friday, it's friday and he would always insert himself into the raps mm -hmm. and like super creepy shots like this his videos were so nuts but ultimately we made fun of him for being cringe which obviously is a crime but i think when he really <clears throat> took things way too far is we, he made this music video called uh goal uh 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 so called, I know it was this girl, Allison Gold, that blonde girl that was in that photo. Right. It was called, what was it? Chinese but, food, right? Was it? No, it wasn't Chinese food. It was the one when she's at the prison and having like an orgy. There's one where she's at like a mental asylum. And oh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Is that the name of it? I don't think so. No. You guys remember that? I made a whole, uh, dude, it was the craziest thing. And he got, he got like widespread media attention for this. But she's like, you know, 10, and she's in like tiny outfit, super exposed, and then there's tons of like almost naked adults dancing, and it's very sexual in nature, and it got widespread um, media attention, and lots of comments, literally every commentary channel made a video about that. Leafy was the one that started calling him a P-word, and then... Uh, I don't know, bro. And then it got super weird. Like, he started, like, threatening us. <laughs> it was one of the weirdest sagas. The... He did a countdown timer where, like, he, with my name on it. He scared the shit out of me. It scared me so much I had to go drive out of my house and go wait at a parking lot. Yeah, that, that was uh, some very, very early podcast lore that a lot of our newer 
viewers may not even know, but that was a legendary stream where we had Post Malone on. Yeah. And Patrice oh. did this whole coordinated, bizarre, like coded, dude, like ARG experience almost, where he had these videos with like <laughs> creepy footage of like an abandoned farm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Crank it, people. Yeah, that it was called Crank it. Mm. I I didn't even know if you can find the video online anymore. You could probably find reactions to it, but boy, that video is is like um, uh, deprived. I mean, it's really messed up. I remember that stream. It was hilarious. Dude, it was, it was scary. I couldn't tell was... how like scared you guys actually were. I was. They, they were I, legitimately because I know Post I can was. To that. Yeah, well, Post was like I knew for sure. It was like, like once the stream was me. over, dude, I left my house. Yeah, they were oh, like wow. they were like, like afraid to go home. home. Holy shit! I mean, he was seeming he was like stalking you in real time. Like, right, and then the thing was that he made a video afterwards saying, like, calling me out and saying he wanted to unalive himself and stuff. And, you know, obviously, that's horrible to hear. I, I, I personally don't know why he targeted me when I felt like there was other people that I, he was the main character at the him. time of the internet. Like, yeah, then there was so many people talking about it. And, like, I guess your video did get pretty popular, but... Uh, I think Leafy did on. a ton of videos on him that got... A lot of views, and with literally the title, like, this guy is a literal pe you know. Right, yeah. Literally. Obviously, I think it's sad to think that I, that I could have resulted in it, but I do think that it is important that this guy's not working with kids and make, I, I actually do. Yeah. After you watch that video, I, I think sure. that, you know, it's important he's not working with kids anymore, and 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 we're making video content like that because, I, I uh, there was something really fucked up going on there, and it was very obvious. Right, and I, that's why I don't understand the videos defending the whole situation because you guys were calling out that he was sexualizing these kids, like it's. Oh well, she. Well, the people who are saying so now the the whole people are trying to start this narrative that like, uh, Patrice Wilson is like some poor defenseless guy that I dr almost drove to unaliving himself. I dare them to watch that music video. Right. <laughs> React to that music video yeah. and then tell me how effed up I am. But anyway, I, the Patrice thing was was so wild. And I mean, the Crank It one was the, what happened? I found it. You found the music video. It's not on, on YouTube, Vimeo. it's on, it's off site. I don't Which, think we can show it. Yeah, I don't it. think we can yeah. show it either, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's on Vimeo. Shush up. Yeah. Oh, shush up, shush up, yeah. And the thing is, like, he had made several very questionable videos leading up to this. And then um, this one really put the, the nail in the coffin. So that's an interesting one, but I don't, I don't have beef with him, you know. I just hope that I do. I, I honestly think he was a danger to, to children around him. <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> if you watch that video, there's really no other conclusion. Yeah. And by the way, it was so heinous that YouTube removed it, and I think banned his channel, and he was getting widespread media attention. So, like, to put it all on me is kind of wild. Like, I didn't even respond to that video, mm -hmm. didn't react to it, till long after all that drama had happened. Right. I was super late to the game on that video, I remember. Yeah, he has Chinese food, you know, it, they're all super weird. People were saying, uh, go Canaro. I don't care about him. I mean, that's all ancient history shit. From about 2010 to 2013, the internet was inundated with dozens of horribly auto-tuned, poorly produced, and yet eminently memeable songs sung by what felt like an endless stream of eager 12-year-olds. From songs like Rebecca Black's Friday to Chinese Food to My Jeans, these performances quickly became the laughing stock of the internet, and the speed at which new ones were produced and went viral made them a pretty interesting phenomenon at the time. The majority of these videos, with a few noted exceptions like My Jeans, were all produced by one company, more specifically by one guy. The company was called Arc Music Factory, which from 2011 onwards was owned and spearheaded by a single producer, a man named Patrice Wilson. 
The company is effectively non-existent as of 2013, but the cultural legacy of songs like Friday persists to this day. It's easy to sit here and say the typical and often repeated things about songs like Friday and Chinese food. The songs are terrible, they're the product of rich stage parents who want to make their annoying kids famous at any cost, and the whole thing represents the death of modern music. But I think the popularity of ARC Music Factory songs represents a lot of interesting things about internet culture in general, things that are a lot bigger than a couple of bad tunes. More specifically, I want to talk about how and why they became a thing in the first place, and how we as the collective internet responded to them. What I really want to talk about is two things. First of all, on ARC's side, what happened with ARC Music Factory was a pretty early instance of a company successfully leveraging online outrage marketing for a profit. This has had some pretty negative effects on the internet's culture going forward, and we're still seeing these practices on a wide scale today. And on the collective internet side, it's an early instance of how widespread cringe culture, or publicly shaming kids for creating harmlessly bad content, can have really negative effects, particularly when paired with situations of exploitation. But before we get into all of that, a bit of backstory on what ARC was and how it operated. That's right, it's lore time! ARC Music Factory, founded in 2010 by two producers named Patrice Wilson and Clarence J, was primarily dedicated to producing songs by teen and preteen artists. It didn't operate in the same way that most formal record labels do, where a label will seek out and sign an artist for a specific amount of time, and will cover the costs of creating and distributing an album in exchange for a cut of the artist's profits. Rather, ARC operated on more of a one-time deal, where artists, which here actually means their parents, would be charged around $4,000 to produce a song, as well as a related music video. On one hand, since most of the artists that they signed were very young, it could mean a fun foray into the music world without really having to commit to anything too serious. Since Patrice Wilson also wrote the songs for those artists, it would appear, at least in theory, that what ARC did was a fairly low-risk opportunity for kids to have a good time and play at being a serious recording artist. Because ARC owned the rights to specific songs and profited off of iTunes and ad revenue from the songs, its primary incentive was to create songs that would make money. Because, you know, capitalism. On its head, this might seem like a mutually beneficial deal, because like any record label, ARC's primary goal was to make money, they should theoretically have had an incentive to produce the best possible song for their clients, to make them look good so that more people would buy the songs and watch the videos. For the first few songs ARC produced, it seems like, if not the outcome, that this was the intention. Most of the early songs on the company's channel were forgettable but average-sounding pop songs with a few thousand views each. The company's first creation, a song called My Reflection by a young singer named Sabrina in September 2010, flew fairly under the radar and wasn't particularly memorable as anything uniquely good or uniquely bad. Of course, all the songs on ARC's channel have a lot more views now, but thanks to the Wayback Machine, we can see that they had significantly less before Friday dropped and made the whole channel go viral. It might not have been the best business deal, but it didn't seem like anything particularly harmful either. Unfortunately, in any situation where the primary goal is to make money, it's very easy for instances of exploitation to pop up. What's notable here is that because ARC's videos were created on a one-time deal rather than any ongoing contracts, Patrice Wilson and ARC didn't really have any obligation to take actions that would benefit the singers' careers in the long term. Even though in theory the most profitable and mutually beneficial action would have been to create good songs that would make people want to buy them and thus help further the kids' careers, Profit motives often just don't work out as nicely as they make them out to be in Econ 101, especially when paired with a healthy dose of outrage. Rebecca Black was 13 at the time she started working with ARC. The music video was a gift from her mother after Rebecca saw that another girl at her school had made a song with ARC. According to Rebecca, when she started working with the company, they initially sent her a song called Superwoman, a romance-centric song about being a boy's superhero. Being uncomfortable with the subject matter and feeling like it was too adult-oriented, she turned the song down, asking for something that didn't involve romance instead. She was then sent the song Friday, which she recorded and recruited some friends for the related music video. The video was released on March 14th, 2011 which was a Monday. But Friday was released on Pi Day, which isn't really relevant to anything, but does make me very happy. Within just a week, the video had gained over 30 million views, almost exclusively from people who hated the song and were sharing it primarily to either complain or meme about how awful it was. The video's like-to-dislike ratio was worse than my Supernatural video, and it was already being parodied by big-name YouTubers like Bart Baker only four days after it had come out. 
And mind you, it was not a good song. My hot take for you today is not gonna be, um, actually it was good and we're all fools for not liking it, but a lot of that critical reception went far beyond just discussing the music itself. A lot of the comments and criticism weren't only directed towards the quality of the song itself, but about Rebecca Black as a person, her physical appearance, her intelligence, and the quality of her character, among other things. She even received a litany of death threats and comments encouraging her to take her own life. A lot of people also seemed to be laboring under the assumption that she'd written the song herself, as criticism of Patrice Wilson and Ark was markedly rare beyond the occasional, why is there a weird grown man rapping in this 13 year old song. One might think the fact that virtually everyone hated the song would have made it the embarrassment of Ark Music Factory, but when people are talking about how much they hate Friday, people are also talking about Friday. The song quickly hit number one on the Billboard Heatseekers chart and made top 100 in eight other music charts. In fact, thanks to the combination of YouTube ad revenue and iTunes sales, it was estimated to have made over $45,000 in its first week of release. Notably, none of ARK's other songs, which were mediocre but not memorably bad in any particular way, had even remotely reached that level of popularity in the past. Certainly, none of them had ever made their way onto iTunes charts or generated any real buzz before then. And this is the problem when profit motives seek through, when attempting to create quality works doesn't pay off in any meaningful way, but creating something that makes people mad nets you hundreds of thousands of dollars that's not a great incentive to create quality works. Another thing that's notable about this is that Rebecca Black didn't initially see a cent of the money made from her likeness being turned into a laughingstock. After a lengthy battle as to who owned the rights to the song, including Rebecca Black and Ark Music Factory copyright claiming each other's versions of the music video, the video was finally re-uploaded from Ark's channel to her own in September of that year, allowing her to make money from it. In an interview with Believer magazine, Patrice talks about what he thinks makes a viral song. He states, All the songs I write have something in common. They're catchphrases. The key to becoming popular is to keep it very simple and have repetitive words. If you have a simple word and you stay with that simple word people might think it's cheesy like that's the stupidest song i've ever heard but subconsciously you're singing a song in your head even if i'm the guy who's known for writing the worst songs in the world at least i'm still known Patrice had a total of three songs go viral. In this interview, Patrice was actually questioned further as to whether he thinks that the insanely corny and cheesy songs were making a mockery of the young people who were singing them. This is what he had to say. After Friday, I had an option. I could have changed my style. I could have gone and done top 40 more serious stuff, but there's no way. Unless you're signed to a major label, if you want to release a Rihanna style song, it requires millions of dollars. I had the option to do something different, but I decided I'm already known for Friday. It's impossible to change. Even if it sounds goofy or that people don't like it, well, somebody likes it. People are still talking about it and it's too late to change now. So I'm not going to work at Sony Music. However, it seems that winning viral formula of catchy, stupid songs had arisen in the era of other viral songs, such as Gangnam Style, that launched the careers of music stars such as Psy. But it would all come crashing down when Arc Music Factory would find themselves in a potential lawsuit against Rebecca Black and her family, which would ultimately start the discussion of child exploitation. After Friday went viral, a legal battle commenced between Arc Music Factory and Rebecca Black's family. Georgina Marquez Kelly, Rebecca Black's mother, accused Arc Music Factory of copyright infringement as well as unlawful exploitation of publicity rights. On March 2011, a letter was sent from the Black's attorney over to Arc Music Factory, stating that they had failed to provide them with the master recording recordings for the song, as well as the music video, and have been exploiting her on YouTube, iTunes, Amazon, and Arc Music Factory's website, as well as releasing an unauthorized Friday ringtone. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Patrice denied almost all of the allegations, stating, I have met with Rebecca Black's mom and everything is fine. She will get the masters to the song and they can have it all. He further states, she is not our exclusive artist, said Wilson. Once an artist meets with us and once they blow up, they have the choice to retain us or move on if they can. 
man. Rebecca is now signed with somebody else. Wilson added that he will remove Black from the ARC Music Factory website. Basically, Rebecca Black's parents are stating that they paid the $4,000 package and not the $2,000 package. So therefore, they were entitled to their masters. Rolling Stone reported, Marquez Kelly paid ARC $4,000, not $2,000, as has been widely reported, to produce the song. And according to Charles' letter, which is their lawyer, the agreement that she signed with ARC in November stipulates that Black has 100% ownership and control of Friday, including the master recording and the music video. But ARC's lawyer, Barry Rothman, cast doubt on the validity of the November agreement. The agreement was not court approved. Rothman said. They say they own the composition. Nothing could be further from the truth. If they go forward and license it or attempt to copyright it in their name, that would be copyright infringement and we'd act accordingly under the circumstances. He added, we are not prepared to engage them in producing documents just because they want them without a court order or litigation. We'd like to see Rebecca Black's career go forward and we're trying to accomplish that within the context of working through the legalities. So basically what was sent to them was the equivalent of a C&D, or what we would call over here in the UK, a pre-action protocol. No legalities had actually commenced at this point. Rebecca Black's family were essentially asking for any kind of contractual proof that they signed anything stating that they were not entitled to the copyrights, the masters or licensing. However, Clarence J's lawyer was basically maintaining that the burden of proof was actually on them to provide their own documents to show exactly what it was that they signed, to which we are led to believe did not happen. It's been confirmed by Patrice Wilson himself, the other half of Arc Music Factory, that he would often operate without a contract and on a handshake basis, and hoping that the families would pay him back on an instalment plan. And many times he would have to front the money himself and hope for the best. The parents we worked with were not millionaires, they were parents who would make monthly payments. Um, I would have to fund the project sometimes and hope that they would make their payments later on. Well, this is just bad business practice, but it's probable that there was no contract in place at all. When Rebecca Black worked on Friday, Rolling Stone continues. Wilson's ARC Music Factory partner, Clarence J, contended that ARC did act as a record label for Black and distributed and promoted her with her mother's consent until it became clear that Black was going to make actual money. Now they're turning around and saying they were exploited, but clearly that was not the case when they were thanking me for forwarding them all the interviews with Rebecca and all of the positive comments from YouTube, said Jay. I was calling Australia on my cell phone, pretending to be Rebecca's agent and setting up radio interviews for Rebecca while Georgina was right next to me. If she thought that I was exploiting this, she could have said it. Georgina's trying to get the rights to things that she doesn't have the rights to, said ARC's creative director, Barry Wayne. So basically, the creative director, Barry Wayne, who most likely would have worked on the visual concept and direction for Friday, is also maintaining that his work is not property of the Black family. They also suggest that Rebecca Black's family started getting dollar signs in their eyes the moment that they saw that their young daughter was rising to the fame that they had hoped for. We also have to remember that at the time, a lot of people were calling Rebecca Black horrible names on the internet. She was being bullied in real life as well as being cyber bullied online, so much so that Rebecca Black's family actually decided to homeschool her. Critics and bloggers were harsh. They're downright mean. Her song Friday is the worst song I've ever heard in my entire life. Even deaf people are complaining. They walk by, they'll start singing Friday in a really nasally voice. This spring, the teasing became so relentless, Rebecca opted for homeschooling. Now her mom also plays the role of teacher. It's hard to go to school when you are so famous and to have kids constantly making fun of what's going on. Rebecca Black is a genius, and anyone that's telling her she's cheesy is full of sh**. Today, it just might be Rebecca Black who's having the last laugh. This weekend, she won a Teen Choice Award. And she sang on stage with her biggest fan, Katy Perry. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. 
Rebecca, who just turned 14, can't go anywhere without fans flocking. And she's surrounded by her new entourage, a publicist, manager, stylist, makeup artist, and sometimes even a bodyguard. So it's clear to me that this was more about wanting to generate that YouTube revenue rather than wanting the video taken down so that Rebecca Black could return to normality. Now we could contest that the video is already out there, so why shouldn't the Black family earn the revenue from the video? And whilst I can agree to some degree, I was able to watch Rebecca Black's Draw My Life video, where she states that after the original original video started generating some virality. The people at Art Music Group called them up and basically said, we can take the video down if you would like and pretend and act as if nothing had ever happened. To which Rebecca Black and her family basically said, no. The people at ARC called and asked if I wanted to take the video down. They said, we can act like nothing ever happened. But I said, no. I was definitely not gonna let them win that easy. In this video, she also admits that she was aware that Arc Music Factory would be posting this video to their YouTube channel. So that October, I went and emailed the company and met with them, and they said that they would love to. Basically, they would write me a song, I would go in and record it, and then they would do the video and upload it. I said, why not? It's my own song. That's cool. So it seems as if this did not present as an issue prior to, once again, media notoriety. At that point, the parents just wanted the money. Even if Arc Music Factory was no longer making any revenue from Friday though, the company still existed and the popularity of Friday created a real shift in their formula. I think it's reasonable to assume that Friday wasn't deliberately written to be a bad song, it was probably just a result of mediocre songwriters and a company rushing last minute to churn out something since Rebecca Black wasn't comfortable with the first song idea. Nothing about their formula in the past had suggested any intention to deliberately make bad music and there's no reason to assume that they just randomly decided to do so with Friday. That being said, in the months after Friday came out, and particularly after they were issued a copyright takedown by Friday, a large portion of their content started to take a turn for the worse. 2012 saw ARC produce the song It's Thanksgiving by 12-year-old singer Nicole Westbrook. In the first week of the song's release alone, it accumulated nearly 8 million views, less than a third of what Friday made in a similar amount of time, but still significantly more than anything else they'd put out since Friday. Notably, Nicole Westbrook appeared on Anderson Live and was featured on news sites like ABC and Time. A look at the lyrics and music video strongly suggests an attempt to recreate Friday's fame. It's a heavily auto-tuned song about a specific date that starts with waking up, has a section that's lyrically almost identical to the Yesterday Was Thursday portion of Friday, and features an equally awkward Patrice Wilson verse. The response to Nicole Westbrook wasn't nearly as harsh as the response to Rebecca Black, most likely because the internet was largely desensitized to it at that point, but she still received a barrage of abusive comments. While a variety of commenters did recognize Patrice Wilson from the Friday video, Nicole was still the face of its Thanksgiving and accordingly received most of the hate while ARC received most of the profits. The next January, a couple months after its Thanksgiving, ARC released the song Skip Rope by a duo dubbed Tween Chronic. The original copy has since been deleted from YouTube, although the teaser for it is still up on ARC's channel. The song was a hip-hop track featuring 10-year-old Allison Gold and her friend Stacy, mostly talking about skip ropes and being confident. The music video, on the other hand, featured the duo buying what was obviously supposed to be a metaphor for alcohol and coke. It also contained yet another verse of Patrice Wilson hanging out with the group of tweens, an interaction that feels markedly more inappropriate in this video than in the others given the drug metaphor. The October after its Thanksgiving came out, Arc Music Factory released another music video for a song called Chinese Food, featuring Alison Gold, this time as a solo artist. The song content is primarily just an ode to the various tasty types of Chinese food, and once again, it is not a good song. The music video in particular is filled with various pretty racist stereotypes of Chinese people, including incorporating Japanese geisha imagery with no differentiation between the two cultures and having Patrice Wilson pop out of a giant panda costume. Once again, this isn't something the then 11-year-old Alison Gold was really responsible for, but she was still the face of the music video nevertheless. Chinese food attained a similar level of infamy to its Thanksgiving, reaching 19 million views and peaking at number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100. Once again, there are a number of songs from Arc Music Factory that weren't widely considered bad, like Alana Lee's Butterflies and Grace Liu's You Are My Star. 
none of them charted. Rather, all of ARK's most successful and profitable songs have been the ones that attracted their singers the most widespread hate and mockery, and it's difficult to believe it's a coincidence that these songs only started popping up after Friday went viral. I have trouble believing a songwriter who previously spent years writing various serviceable but unmemorable songs would suddenly lose all songwriting ability and genuinely think a lyric like I love chow mein, chow mama mama mein was unironically good. Rather, this is a pretty clear early instance of a company realizing that advertising based on anger and outrage was just as effective at creating engagement and conversation than producing a genuinely good product. For a little bit more information about how companies use outrage marketing for their own benefit, I'd recommend watching H Bomber Guy's Woke Brands video as it's a really great dive into the topic. In the meantime, outrage marketing is essentially when a company will deliberately stir up a controversy with themselves in the center of it in order to create a conversation regarding their brand. For example, one sports company had somebody spray paint a Union Jack onto a polar bear as a publicity stunt. Lots of people vocally complained about it and tied their company to these complaints and the company's brand awareness immediately went up. Nike's endorsement of athlete Colin Kaepernick, who generated a lot of controversy and outrage after protesting against systemic racism during performances of the US national anthem, also sparked a series of boycotts and people hashtagging pictures of themselves burning their Nikes, and their sales went up by 31%. Even though this is an instance where I don't think Nike did anything wrong, it's also still doubtful that that partnership was born out of altruism and a commitment to doing the right thing, rather than just using it as an attempt to drum up buzz. It's basically no such thing as bad press the marketing tactic. It's also something that's incentivized by YouTube itself, since the site takes any interaction with your video as a sign of engagement, and thus a sign that your video should be promoted by the algorithm. So if I made a really horrible video and a whole bunch of people disliked it and left a whole bunch of comments saying it was horrible, my channel could still benefit. It's the same reason channels like CinemaSins intentionally make small mistakes in their videos. They claim it's for fun because they're playing a character, but in actuality, it's to give them a comment boost from people correcting them. Of course, Arc Music Factory were far from the first people to figure this out, but there's certainly a very interesting case study for how this happens. How drastically their formula changed after the presumably accidental success of Friday could barely be any less subtle, and it's a notable early case of a company successfully leveraging online outrage at the expense of their clients. I'm not going to share the clips of either video for obvious reasons, but Arc Music Factory produced two more songs with Alison Gold in 2013. One, called ABCDEFG, flew slightly under the radar as it was less campy than its counterparts, but the music video featured a clip of Patrice Wilson spiking Alison Gold's drink with what was labeled as Love Potion. This, taken in concert with a now-deleted video for a song called Shush Up, was one of the first times criticism against Arc was directed towards Patrice Wilson specifically rather than its young performers. The video featured Alison Gold, still 11, in heavy makeup and an extremely short dress being arrested and then electric chaired. This is a fairly mild description for what the video was actually like, but suffice it to say, it was extremely inappropriate. In fact, Alison Gold's mother demanded it be removed almost immediately. The video was deleted after a few days, and the company effectively went defunct shortly thereafter. The channel has since been handed off to a kid who does vlogs. Even after their deletion, Ark still continued to drum up controversy, this time directed more heavily towards Wilson than towards the singers. Most notably, popular commentary channel H3H3 made several videos specifically criticizing Patrice Wilson for his choice to put Alison Gold in an inappropriate costume and situation. The two later briefly feuded. Even so, there will never be as much backlash to someone like Patrice Wilson on the internet than there was to 13-year-old Rebecca Black or 12-year-old Nicole Westbrook. It's difficult to say how much money Patrice Wilson made off of Arc Music Factory, or how much of that money the kids ever saw. Beyond data for Friday, that information doesn't seem to be publicly accessible, and with the exception of Rebecca Black, none of Arc's former creators have chosen to be public figures. However, I think regardless of the amount of money, if any, that most of the kids who sang with Arc received, the situation was still profoundly exploitative in countless ways. The company effectively took advantage of families who had no concept of the potential impact of these songs' popularity, deliberately gave a number of very young girls very bad and in some cases overtly sexualized material for them to work with in a ploy to make more money, 
while fully aware that doing this would net these young girls a massive amount of online hate, allowed these young girls to take the fall for this online hate with very little attempt to regulate or moderate it, and in the case of some creators like Rebecca Black, worked as hard as possible to make sure that these young girls and their families wouldn't see a cent of that money at the end of the day. I want to be clear, I think what Patrice Wilson did with Arc Music Factory is absolutely despicable and I absolutely don't think, oh we all need to make money under capitalism is in any way a justifiable defense for effectively knowingly setting up dozens of young girls to be harassed online for a profit. That being said, I also want to make it clear that I'm not making this video to be any kind of call out or a whole video about how this one person sucks. Given that he's effectively disappeared off the face of the internet, this video wouldn't serve as a particularly effective accountability mechanism anyway. almost all Republicans who somehow, somehow, somehow need to be deprogrammed. They are members of our cult. How are we going to really almost deprogram these people? There are millions no. of people who believe that the election was rigged. How do you begin to deprogram them? People yeah. are being tortured. Are you tortured? People have been arrested. What's the example? Most of these prison guards have been indoctrinated that all the Trump people are racist. We're labeled as terrorists. We're labeled as racist. I am a mom of four mixed daughters. I love all people. Justice for us seems almost impossible.